Greetings. One of the things that is an inescapable confluence of multiple megatrends within technology and economics, but is not entering into either the macroeconomic discussion or discussions about artificial intelligence, is the fact that technological deflation is exponential and accelerating, and it is the only possible explanation about why so much quantitative easing, money printing, has caused so little inflation. In fact, no aberrant inflation at all, as I proved to everyone each month on this channel with those monthly series of monetary creation update videos. This has tremendous implications for how government has to adapt to technology in the future, whether they like it or not. And I created this chart to explain in a very simple sense what is happening. So let me move my face over here. Now put aside the fact that there is no fixed calendar year assigned over here. I'll get to that later in this video. And also put aside the fact that technological deflation is borderless and very international, while the tax rates of each country are for that country. That latter paradigm is what will have to shift and adapt as well as technology becomes a bigger and bigger force in the economy. But think of it this way. First, let me explain this chart. Let's say this is federal government spending, and this is time moving forward. And this green parabola is the amount of technological deflation that is consuming quantitative easing and ingesting that to produce more technology and is self-reinforcing. Let's say that when quantitative easing began in earnest, even though the United States was the only country doing it around 2010, let's say that that is over here. Let's say that my Atom thesis, which I released in 2016, version 1, was over here. So let's say that we are over here today in 2023, still in the early phases of this entire technological deflation exponential curve. What this means is that we have already gotten to a point where the amount of technological deflation offsets a significant amount of government spending and taxation of people, and it would be of tremendous benefit to all citizens, all taxpayers, and to the government itself to recognize this rather than not recognize it, because now we are getting to the steeper part of the gradient. Take just the United States, again, even though money printing and technological deflation is borderless, the balance sheet to date is about $8.3 trillion since 2010. 2010 to present, $8.3 trillion. The amount of income tax that people have paid over the same period is maybe $40 trillion combined. So the amount of money printing has already been as much as 20% of income tax paid and very front weighted. 20% is not a lot, but it's not trivial either. And as this rises, we get to the point where the amount of money printing that has to be done actually subsumes income tax in theory. Now government assumptions and structure has to change substantially and none of the people running the major governments of the world or the economists who advise them are even remotely thinking this way. They're content to not be able to answer any questions about why their models that are based on 1950s era textbooks don't work and why their predictions are always wrong. They're content to ignore that because their job does not require them to be right about anything. Imagine that. Because here, Independent of what the actual calendar years are, it's very safe to say that by the 2030s, that decade, whether the beginning of that decade or the latter parts of that decade, we will absolutely be here. The amount of money printing that can be done without aberrant inflation, or more accurately, just to offset technological deflation and keep inflation at 2 to 3%, I say 3% is optimal as long-time viewers know, is more than the income tax that the federal government collects. And not to mention all the time spent on tax-related preparation and the cost of tax complexity. Money printing will exceed this sum by the 2030s. Now, if it were only the United States, you could do this by 2025, but then other countries would be shafted. And if you were a small country, this was possible even in 2017. Now let me go to a chart from my Atom publication to indicate how different things could be versus what they are under this paradigm. This is my Atom publication chapter 10. And just see this chart over here, which is embedded in the text of that chapter. This is what currently exists right now. 
certain amount of taxes are collected through a very onerous and complicated process that requires a lot of agents to audit and monitor people and is complex enough that involves a lot of auditors and a lot of taxpayers. A very wasteful activity when you consider all the time and energy spent on it in the economy. Federal spending is of course in excess of taxes collected. That surplus amount is known as the budget deficit and the budget deficit each year is quite huge. COVID has normalized a pattern of deficits much higher Higher than existed even up to 2019 in the United States. And most government spending is a transfer between individuals. Many people who justify the current government structure say that we need roads and bridges and things like that, but that is only 20% of all government spending. Roads, bridges, all those necessities. 75% is just a transfer between individuals as described in this publication throughout. And what happens on the monetary side, this is the fiscal side, this is the monetary side, Trillions of dollars of money printing by the Federal Reserve is done by buying only two things, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, which distorts exclusively those markets and nothing else. 40% plus of U.S. mortgages are owned by the Federal Reserve. There is tremendous 40% plus wastage of all taxes, spending, and everything just from this. And then here you have only the most indirect convoluted of methodologies to prop up the economy with no merger of fiscal and monetary. The people who talk about merger of fiscal and monetary, they have something called modern monetary theory, but that is still quite primitive relative to the atom because it does not account for exponential technological change at all and does not give a pathway towards elimination of income taxes on humans because artificial intelligence and other automation is paying for that income tax. Now, something that would be better is what this is below. Now, remember, I wrote this in 2016 when 2025 was nine years in the future. Technologically and economically, it is possible to do this by 2025, but ideologically, clearly it is not because there has been zero ideological progress since 2016 on this front. In fact, things have gone backwards. Now it is a pretty common fad for people to say that inflation is 40% a year, even though that's clearly not true. And see this video over here about how U.S. conservatives and libertarians have lost their minds about inflation, although they are not the only ones that have. But for them, it has become their daily dopamine drug to whine about how inflation is bad. So see this wheel over here of mutual reinforcement. If PermaQE at 16 to 24% a year compound annual growth rate, just like that parabola we saw earlier in the green granite. If that money is distributed in a more diffuse and even manner to people, government spending can be contributed by the central bank, and then you can migrate the tax burden gradually away from people onto AI, but have a more robust government safety net as a result. That's not right-wing nor left-wing, because I say it's possible to get to 0% income tax on humans while having a better safety net, effectively a negative income tax on humans, because of this new layer that technology creates, and this layer is huge. And this is, in fact, technologically and economically possible by even 2025 is definitely not ideologically or politically possible. In fact, things have gone backwards. So let's say 2010 was here, 2016 was here, 2023 was here. COVID-19 and the printing in response to that have confused this issue substantially, but things are still dissipating away. And we are about to get over here before you know it. The decade of the 2030s will be more like this. Some country like Japan or China will figure this out much sooner than the United States. In the 2030s, United States PhD economists will still have trouble admitting that money printing has not caused inflation and that fiscal and monetary decisions should be merged because those pools of money should be merged on account of the massively higher efficiency that would create. There of course has to be responsible stewardship and the United States and most other countries are not suitable for that. Politicians spend more and more with no recognition about fiscal responsibility and those tendencies could get exacerbated. That's why Western countries at least are not even ready for something like this. But technology doesn't care because this is happening whether PhD economists and conservatives and gold bugs are ready for it or not. So this is just one other way to look at what is happening in the monetization of technological deflation and the conjunction of how soon we are actually going to get to a point where the amount of quantitative easing done seems to be as much or more than taxes collected. 
It's already 20% over that entire 13 year period and it's poised to go even higher. In Japan, the amount of money printing they have done is more than all of the income tax collected in that country and that country still has no aberrantly high inflation. They still struggle with deflation. So people in Japan should tell their government, why do we have to pay tax at all when you can just print money? That would make our economy super competitive a lot of topics over here but now in part two of this video we are going to look at how the gradual merger of taxation with artificial intelligence can be executed and it's not as complicated as people think so now we continue to part two